Hi, this is Pat Johnson, and this is Psych 150, and today we're having another mini lecture, and this one is on correlations. So we're in the middle of um, talking about different types of research. We've covered descriptive research, and now we're moving on to correlations. So what is a correlation? Think of relationship as another word for correlation because correlations show how two variables are related to each other. In other words, what the relationship is between two different variables. And a variable is anything that can vary. So the root word of variable is vary, and a variable is anything that can take on different values. What correlations do is they help us make predictions and describe relationships between two variables. So if we know what the relationship is between two variables, we can make predictions about um, how one will move in relationship to the other. For example, height and weight are both variables. Height can go up or height can uh, go down. In other words, I am vertically challenged. I'm only five foot two, so most of you are probably taller than me. Height is a variable. Weight is also a variable. Weight can go up, weight can go down. Um, weight, just like height, is a variable. Now, if uh, we were to put these on a graph, which I'll show in just a second, we can see that height and weight are related to each other. So here's a scatter plot, and we have weight on this axis, and we have height on this axis, and each dot is indicating an individual person, and here's height in inches, and here is weight in pounds. So this looks like height and weight probably in uh, kids, in uh, like um, maybe middle schoolers or late elementary school. And you can see that here's a short, light uh, child. Here are some children who um, are more average. Here's a... Uh, um, uh, one that weighs almost 140 pounds but isn't that tall. And then here's one who's really tall and looks like they only weigh about probably 110 pounds. But in general, we can say that as height goes up, weight goes up. Now it's possible to have outliers. In other words, you could have a really short, fluffy person here and you could have a really tall, skinny person here. But in general, as height goes up, weight goes up. And that's a correlation. That's showing a relationship between two variables. Let's look at some uh, examples. Let's look at what we mean by a positive correlation and a negative correlation. In a positive correlation, both variables are moving in the same direction. So they both go up or they both go down. Some examples of positive correlations are height and weight. As height goes up, weight tend to goes up. And another example would be education and pay. So Many of you are here enrolled in this class, uh, obtaining higher education, um, possibly so that you can get a uh, better job at some point in your life. So uh, as education goes up, pay goes up. And some of you are saying, now wait a second, that's not my reason, or I know a lot of educated people um, who are not uh, very well paid, or I know some people who are really highly paid and they don't have much of an education. And all of those statements are true. But in general, as education goes up, pay goes up. Now, negative correlation doesn't mean bad. It just means that our two variables are moving in opposite directions. So as one goes up, the other goes down. 
An example of this would be absences and grades. I've noticed over the years that as students' absences go up, their grades tend to go down. So as absences go up, grades tend to go down. Or as um, grades go up, absences go down. There's an inverse relationship between them. It's a negative correlation. Another example of a negative correlation would be stress and health. As stress goes up, our health tends to go down. Or as our health goes up, our stress tends to go down. Notice we're not using the word cause. We never want to use the word cause when we're talking about correlations. We're just talking about the relationship. So again, positive doesn't mean good. It just means they're moving in the same direction, either both going up or both going down. And in a negative correlation, as one goes up, the other goes down. Now, we could plug our uh, two variables into a calculator. And you can do this on your hand calculator. There are also all sorts of um, online calculators for correlations. In other words, for each of our subjects, we would have the two variables. So we could have height and weight for this person, height and weight for this person, height and weight for this person, or we could have um, uh, we could have education and pay for each person. We could have any two variables and plug those columns of variables into a correlation formula. That formula is going to spit out a number. And that number is always going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. If it's outside negative 1 and positive 1, it's not a correlation because correlations always have to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, if the number spit out by our correlation is hanging out somewhere around here, um, or actually, let's do it this way. If the number is between 0 and positive 1, it is a positive correlation. And again, from our last slide, you remember that a positive correlation just means our two variables are moving in the same direction. On the other hand, if the number spit out by our uh, correlation uh, computation, uh, our formula, is between 0 and negative 1, it means it's a negative correlation. And again, a negative correlation doesn't mean bad. It just means the two variables are moving in opposite directions. Now, what do those numbers actually mean? Well, if I asked you to tell me if the correlation between shoe size and grade on your first test was a negative correlation or a positive correlation, you would probably look at me very perplexed and say, there's no correlation at all. And you're right, there's not. So in general, the correlation between um, shoe size and grade on your test would be around zero, which means there's no relationship, no correlation when it's around zero. If on, if, on the other hand, that number is closer to negative one, or closer to positive 1, that means it's a really strong relationship. In other words, we could really predict one if we knew the other. Around here in the uh, negative 0.4 or here in the positive 0.4 range, it would be a medium, medium, and then down here on either side of zero, it would be a very weak relationship. So let's suppose I asked you on a test which uh, correlation was stronger, um, positive 0.8 or positive 0.3. 
you would say positive 0.8 because that's closer to uh, one of the extremes than positive 0.3 is. Positive 0.3 is just here. And what if I did this and made it a negative 0.8? So which is stronger, negative 0.8 or uh, positive 0.3? And again, we would have negative 0.8 being uh, stronger. Uh, for you, those of you who are math nerds, you know that's uh, taking the absolute value, ignoring the sign and just taking the absolute value. Now, here's a tough question, and I'm going to try to fool you, so don't let me fool you. What if the question on the test said something like, um, which is the strongest, positive 0.3, negative 0.4, positive 0.9, or positive, oh, let's say 3.2? Which of these four is the strongest correlation? Now, first of all, I gave you a hint. I said I was trying to um, trick you. You have to cross out 3.2 because 3.2 is not between negative 1 and positive 1. That one's not even a possibility. And again, the rest of these are between negative 1 and positive 1. And the one that's strongest would be this one right here. It's right here. It's very strong. If it was a negative 0.9, it would also be a very strong correlation. Okay. The most important thing you need to, need to remember about correlations is correlation does not mean causation. And what we mean by this is just because two variables are correlated doesn't mean we can say one variable cause the other. For example, we know that depression and self-esteem are correlated. And ask yourself, first of all, what type of correlation would depression and self-esteem have? As depression goes up, what happens to self-esteem? Well, usually as depression goes up, self-esteem goes down. And if you remember from the earlier slide, when we have a relationship like this, as one goes up and the other goes down, that's a negative correlation. Okay? But we can't say that depression is causing low self-esteem. We also can't say that uh, low self-esteem is causing depression. All we can say is that they're related. And here's why. In a correlation, your first variable may be causing the second variable. It may be true that depression causes low self-esteem. Or it could be that low self-esteem causes depression. That's a possibility also. But often what's happening in a correlation is some third variable is causing both variables to change. In other words, it could be, um, let's suppose there's been a tragedy in the person's life. Well, that could cause depression and that could cause low self-esteem. So in a correlation, we don't know what's causing what. All we can say is that there's a correlation. They're related to each other, but we can't say that there's causation. To be able to say that one variable cause the other, we have to go on to our next type of research, and that's experiments.